Countries whose students perform well at mathematics and science see a growth in innovation, jobs and the economy. The chairman of the World Economic Forum has said that a technological revolution that will fundamentally change the way we live, work and relate to each other is upon us. This revolution will need people skilled in maths and science to propel economies forward and keep up with disruptions in almost every sector. Now, World Economic Forum report on South Africa's maths and science education in 2014 placed it last out of 148 countries behind Haiti, Chad and Lesotho as well as Zimbabwe. An entrepreneur has come up with Siafunda Digital Libraries, which allows learners to access and download books, past papers and video tutorials for free. Siafunda founder and MD Zakeni Ngubo joins me in studio now. Thanks so much for your time on SABC News. Take us through why you founded Siafunda and how exactly it works. Well, it's a, it's a bit of a personal journey because I went to a township school in Umlazi, which was very much highly under-resourced. So during my last two years, our school didn't have a math teacher. So after completing, after obtaining five distinctions, I still couldn't get into university because of my math results. So I had to go into a finishing school and upgrade my math results to get in. Uh, so I realized that uh, once I completed varsity, it, the problem is still pretty much the same in school. So we still have kids who don't have access to textbooks, who still don't have teachers. So the idea was basically just to create a system that will allow students to access some of the best material using their mobile devices. And how do exactly, if I'm a student sitting at home, how will it work? Do I log on to a portal? Am I taught by someone in real time? Mm -hmm. Basically, we have digital content that we've developed. So we work with some of the best teachers in the country to develop the video lessons, the textbooks, and the workbooks. But what we do then is put all the info, that information into a digital hub, which is housed in schools, libraries, and community centers, where students can go there and they can download this content without actually having to pay for data or internet. And it works with any student, basically, who has a digital device that picks up Wi-Fi. So you can also go online to access our platform, but we found that the best way for students to be able to access it without having to pay for the data is through the digital hubs. And what's your footprint like as Siafunda? How many schools and community centers are accessing your materials currently? <coughs> We're currently in 47 schools, so we are currently distributing content to about 81,000 students uh, nationally. Mm -hmm. Have you spoken to the Department of Education about your app? Are you working with other people in order to make sure that the footprint grows and more people have access to the system? Uh, yes, actually, with the Department of Education, we work with them in terms of ensuring the pedagogy and that the content we developed is in line with the curriculum. And we have a campaign that we're doing now called Adopt a School, where we work with non-profit organizations, companies in the corporate sector, as well as high net worth individuals to sponsor a school. Because a lot of the schools we deal with are very underprivileged and they don't have a budget to actually pay for the system. And therefore, we get other parties to come in and pay and, uh, for the cost of setting up and managing a system. And in return, we give them analytics and access to the data so they can track performance, usage, as well as improvements in the system. But also with a lot of companies, what it does, it feeds into the adversary scheme because they have access to performance data of students okay. and they can communicate to those students. What happens if learners don't have access to devices? I know you've said that 76% of high school learners have access to some kind of a mobile device. That's why your platform is going to be so successful. Mm -hmm. What if they are the percentage <coughs> that doesn't have this? Well, with every school we get into, we put up at least about 20 tablets uh, in school and on a short loan basis. And therefore, the students who have devices can come in and use their own. But the students who don't have access to devices can actually borrow them from the school. So they sign in for them and then they use them and then they leave them at the school. With, the, with uh, access to internet and downloading your materials, that's also a problem in South Africa. There's not universal access to internet. How do you deal with that? Well, uh, yeah, that's actually a big problem because it's also very slow and it's very expensive to actually uh, be able to access the content on the internet. So our servers, it's, as I said, it's basically a digital hub where the content is, ho is housed locally. So that means when a student is accessing it, they're not paying for the data. Oh, I see. Going forward, uh, you've said that by 2019, you'd like to reach a certain amount of schools. How are you going to do that? Well, so far the adopt -a school program has been very successful in terms of getting uh, other parties and third parties to actually sponsor a school, uh, both locally and internationally. But we are working on uh, a deal with the Department of Education to extend uh, along with other partners to, to be able to get into more schools. So there's a perception and there's obviously facts as well that South African students are really struggling with maths and science. When you're doing the video content, you said you've localized the content and localized the teachers. How do you do that? 
Yes, well, the problem is a lot of the textbooks and the material that's available now is either international or it's irrelevant to the students. So one, because of language, but two, because of context. So what we do is with the teachers we're working with, is teachers who are already achieving and doing amazing work uh, in township and rural schools. So the power policy is 80-20, which is 80% English and 20% Zulu. So it's broken down English, but also the context is localized. So if you're making an example, for instance, about increasing an area surface, you talk to, about to students about chopping onions. So you take the concepts that are abstract and difficult to comprehend and bring it down to what they're doing every single day and what they can relate to. If a student uh, in grade 8 to 12 is watching at home now and wants to know where they can access this material, where do they go? Well, uh, you can go into uh, siafunda.co.za. And that's without an I? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Siafunda, S-Y-A-F-U-N-D-A. And from there, at the top uh, right-hand corner, there's a student central link. And so once they click in there, then it'll take them to our portal. And that's where they can access the material. Uh, otherwise, they can basically look into our list of which uh, hubs and which schools actually have our servers. So you can literally go into any school because it's 24 hours a day. It's always running. So whether it's a school or a library where we have a, a hub there, you can go in and you can download and access any material that they're looking for. Thank you very much for your time on SABC News. It's time for a short break. When I come back, I'll have more international news for you. Stay with us.